Welcome to the Dr. Geo podcast. I am your host, Dr. Geo, where it is my full intention to help you improve your prostate health and live better with age. Dr. Geo, I just got this question not that long ago. Dr. Geo, red meat, dairy, really bad. I became vegetarian. It's dairy and red meat or animal products of any kind bad for you for prostate cancer. Does it make prostate does it cause prostate cancer or if you have it will it make it worse? That's a fascinating question because of course you would say and you would think and I know why. Uh, yes, it does. It's bad for you. Now, everything I'm going to say it's a combination of course of all the research I've ever done. I've been reading diet books for 25 years. I've done every diet. Um I've also have read and analyzed the research articles, the scientific papers very closely. Okay. Specifically diets as they relate to prostate cancer. And then I have experience with working with thousands and thousands of patients uh with lifestyle interventions and in a holistic approach for prostate cancer. So I'm going to bring that all here and I'm going to give it all to you. It's almost like that file in my brain that relates to diet and prostate cancer, I'm just going to pull it out and give it to you. Okay. Everything I know. Um, so here we go. Let's start. Let, let me start with this. If, if I may, I think it's very important not to become overly dogmatic with diets. It seems like diets become, um, a religion, like religion or political affiliation. So we, we don't want that, right? Oh, I'm a vegan person and uh, uh, plant-based and, uh, and I'm, a, I'm a ketogenic. And it's almost like you, be, you belong part of a tribe. Now, I understand that it's human nature to be a little tribal and be, be part of something, no problem. But I don't necessarily care about that as much for you. I care for you to eat what's right for you. And to have a dietary approach that's sustainable. You know how many times I've seen people start a diet, maybe do it for a month, maybe do it for three months, maybe do it for a year, and then they give it up, right? That's not what we want, and that's not what's good for you. We are in the long game. If you've been diagnosed with prostate cancer, you're in the long game. You're in the long game, okay? We're not interested in, oh, let me do this diet for three months. It's not a, a weight loss diet, right? Oh, I have a wedding coming in three months. I need to lose some weight. So then after the wedding, it's, you know, you go back to your old ways of doing things. We don't want that. So that's the first thing. It has to be sustainable. Forget about tribalness. Forget about I belong to this group. Who cares? It's about what's right for you. What's dietarily the right approach that you should take? Now, understand that prostate cancer is one component of it, right? You want other things. You don't want to have other cancers developing, right? You know, I always tell my patients, you know, half jokingly, I say, well, let me, let me get this straight. You don't want to die from prostate cancer, right? No, I definitely, I definitely don't want, I just got this diagnosis. I definitely don't want to die from prostate cancer. But you also don't want to die from anything else. Is that right? Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. And you want to live as long as possible. Yeah, yeah, sure. And you want the best quality of life for as long as possible. Yeah, yeah, of course. Right? So <laughs> I am looking at the bigger picture as I tell you what I'm about to tell you as it relates to red meat, diet, uh, animal sources for prostate cancer. I'm looking at the bigger picture as well as what's good and what's not for prostate cancer. All right. So the first thing, the approach has to be sustainable before we talk about eat, don't eat red meat or eat red meat. Because if you're a red meat eater and then you go vegan for a year and then you crave meat. You can't be around a barbecue because, man, I wanna, I wanna, I can't, I wanna put my teeth in that burger, and it becomes so. I mean, look, 
any lifestyle change, just it, it, it's there's a difficulty initially with it. There's no question. Uh, for you know, success requires work and discipline and unease and uncomfortability initially, but then it gets easier. It becomes a way of life, which is exactly what I am suggesting here to you today. I am suggesting that you create a lifestyle, not a diet. Besides, I don't like the first three words in the word diet. <laughs> I don't like those first three words. You know, die it. I don't want that, right? Lifestyle, life. Yeah, that's what we want. Lifestyle. Yep, that's good. <laughs> that's good for me, right? So we want to create a lifestyle. We want to create an identity of healthy living. And that may include whatever, honestly, dietarily, pizza. And we'll talk about that, uh, you know, breaking the rules. But we want a healthy life. We, don't, we want a healthy identity that's sustainable and will help you in the long game. Okay? So first thing has to be sustainable. Second thing. The real problem is that we're all eating too much and people with prostate cancer are eating too much. This is before we start talking about don't eat meat or eat meat. You're eating too much. The bigger, the biggest problem is that we're eating too much. You're eating too much. Okay. So uh, carbs, low carb, high carbs, low meat, no meat, fish, pescatarian diet, plant-based. You're eating too much. And I know people that are doing plant-based diets that are overweight and they can't lose weight. And if you are heavy, right, if you are heavy, I'm talking about really heavy, that predisposes you to prostate cancer diagnosis, that predisposes you to prostate cancer development, and that predisposes you to prostate cancer progression. So why are we talking about anything other than, hey, let's lose some weight here, if that's you? OK, that's the first step. So you're eating too much. Practice some level of intermittent fasting. Now, here's the deal. You've heard me say before, man, listen, intermittent fasting is the way to go. 16, try to reach 16 hours a day of fasting. You can include when you're in the middle of your fast, you can include water, um, coffee with no tea, uh, no, excuse me, no sugar and no milk in it. Um, Tea, no sugar, no milk, and any supplements you take or pharmaceutical meds that you may take, right? That's all. You can include all those things as part of your fast. Then you've heard me say, well, skip breakfast, or at least some of you may skip breakfast. That may be true for me, and that may be true for some of you, but I want to make sure that you listening, because I don't know you all, but I do know that everybody has a different method of eating and everyone has a different approach towards food and eating. So why am I saying this? Some of you actually need breakfast to function, right? So you can't really function without breakfast and be productive and do the work you do and go to work and work with your family without breakfast. Others can, you know, a little coffee, a little tea, green tea, you know, till 12, 1 o'clock, you do fine, right? So if you need breakfast, no problem. Eat breakfast, but just try to stay in a fasted state for 12 hours, 10, 12 hours, have dinner, and then another 10 to 12 hours of a fasted state. That's right. So we typically don't need more than two meals a day. The issue is, and the focus should be, that those two meals need to be solid. Those two meals need to be solid. You need nutrients because one of the problems with fasting, and uh, you may know that uh, intermittent fasting is one way, but there are some um, med uh, medicinal approaches to fasting where you fasting, you know, a couple of three days a week or three days in one week for, you know, three days a month, or sometimes a week a month, or a week every quarter. There's different approaches. And I think there's value to all of it for most people. But again, 
is it sustainable? I've fasted. I used to fast quite a bit and it is great and you get clarity, but it's not something that, um, that is sustainable for most people and you need energy. So I don't have the luxury, neither do you of fasting for a couple of feel like crap and not work and not get on this podcast and not see patients and see patients at an optimal level, you know, where I'm, when I'm with energy and focused. Um, so I cannot afford to do that. There are fasting clinics out there and then th that may work. Right. And certainly that there's therapeutic components to it throughout history. People have fasted. Takeaway. We're all eating too much. Find a methodology in your lifestyle where you can fast for 10 to 12 hours. And lastly, as it relates to fasting, it is best ultimately to have your last meal early and fast throughout the night. And I'm talking about specifically for prostate cancer, likely for other things as well. What am I saying here? You want to end your dinner, your supper as early as possible. So that now you have two to three hours before going to bed in a fasted state, then you're sleeping for six to eight hours in a fasted state, and then you have another cu a couple of hours when you wake up fasted. So that's better than eating late at night right before going to bed and having food to digest while you're sleeping. A, that interferes with quality of sleep, and B, that's not necessarily fasting. Okay, so make your dinners as early as possible. Dr. Gio, I am 53 years old, prostate cancer diagnosis. I don't want prostate cancer to recur. I have a family. I have, you know, three young kids at home. Sometimes we have meals that start at 9 p.m. because that's the way life is. I want you to have meals with your family. I do. So I want so if the so I want you to know the rules. The, the rule is here or the guideline, I should say, because rules are like you can't break the rule. Well, these are guidelines. Make your last meal as early as possible. For some of you, that's 9 p.m. because it is important to have meals with your family. Try to have those meals earlier if possible. But sometimes by the time kids get out of school, they have sports afterwards, they get home around 7.30, shower. We're talking 8.30 sometimes. That's when you have a meal with your family, right? So have it, early, have it when you have it. Try to make maybe there's family time, not every night, you know, a couple of times a night, uh, a couple of times a week. Well, then the times that you don't have your family dinners, then have it earlier. So that's what you want to do. So sustainability first. Number two is not what to eat. We haven't even gone there is when to eat. Right. Don't eat so much. All right. Let's get by. Let's get down to the. Let's get down to the meat of things. <laughs> All pun intended. All right. Are meats bad for prostate cancer? Here's the deal, folks. Here's the deal. And it's something that I've been putting a lot of thought into. I've read every paper. Here's the deal. <clears throat> we need muscle. We need to have muscle and, 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 and keep as much muscle as possible as we get older, because the number one cause of mortality in aging people, I'd argue, is muscle wasting or sarcopenia. Remember, you're not just interested, right, in not dying from prostate cancer. You're interested in not dying from anything prematurely, and you want to sustain good quality of life. Well, you need muscle to do that. And as we age, if we're not careful, we're going to have muscle wasting. Okay? So I say that because it turns out that animal products do help you with keeping muscle because they have not only – so here's the argument that I hear, and I was in a debate once, and, well, you know, you can get, you can get protein from – you could get good quality protein from a plant-based diet. I've talked about this before, so I'm not going to belabor, but the takeaway is this. It's not a matter. There, there are many amino acids and things in proteins. The, there are about three that are called branch chain amino acids, primarily actually one 
but three that contribute to muscle development and muscle production that you really find either mostly in meat or animal products or what's called called a dias score it stands for something but dias is the it's not only that the product the food contains all the protein but is the protein digestible and does it have the right type of protein so things like eggs and i know you've read that eggs are bad for prostate cancer i've written on that um dairy and animal products they all have high dia score which means that it has all the proper protein all the right amino acids that's absorbable to create muscle okay so dr geo I've been vegan and plant-based for five years because that's what I heard I need to do. Are you suggesting that I need to eat meats and dairy and eggs? I'm not suggesting anything. I'm suggesting that you live the lifestyle that is right for you, that's sustainable. I want you to eat less. <laughs> and I want you to eat enough protein that contain what's called the brand chain amino acids, primarily leucine, leucine, um, iso, uh, 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 isoleucine and valine, branching amino acids, because these are the type of proteins that are involved in creating muscle. And if you're a man on androgen deprivation therapy and you don't have testosterone, I want you to have muscle. So, and if you're over 60, that's when all the sarcopenia really kicks in. I want you to develop muscle. Okay. Now, of course, you need to exercise. You need weight resistant exercise to create muscle, right? So it's not just eating meats and things creating. Are you suggesting for me to be on a carnivore diet? Are you suggesting for me to be in a paleo diet? Are you said, su- I'm not suggesting any of those things. I am saying that, well, let me tell you exactly what I'm saying. A, when you look at the literature, It does not necessarily suggest that animal products are bad for prostate cancer. I think the main reason is because no one food is either good for prostate cancer or good for any disease. And no one food is bad for prostate cancer or or bad for any disease. That's an oversimplification. Just like soy has been demonized by, by the paleo group and the meat eaters. As it's as if it's a bad food, it's not. Oh, it's estrogenic. Well, but there are many foods that are estrogenic. Soy is one of them. So it's not a bad food for prostate cancer either, right? Soy is not, and meats are not. When you look at the literature, what it highly suggests is the overeating of meat. A, B, the charring of the meats when it's grilled or broiled, so that all the blackening on the meats is a problem. And processed meats like cold cuts and ham and bacon and those things, those are probably not great because they, uh, they have all kinds of ingredients and nitrites and things and that might be pro-carcinogenic, according to research. So that's what the literature really shows. Okay, As it relates to dairy, it, there is an association, not causation, association to dairy and prostate cancer. So what I tell patients is, you know what? Give up the dairy. A, you don't really need it. B, you know, there might be some significant link with dairy, um, uh, with consuming dairy. Give up the dairy. If you're going to have coffee, have coffee. If you're going to have tea, have tea. Have things without dairy. Have things without sugar. Just adapt to it. But let's just say, Dr. G, I love a little, just a touch of dairy in my, in my coffee, just a little cream, no problem. The poison is in the dose. What's the number one rule? You're eating too much. So eat less. So a touch of cream to, in your coffee, that's not a big deal. Okay? That's fine. Consume a plant-based diet. Dr. G, but I thought, <laughs> this is the other one, right? A plant-based a plant-based diet, folks, does not exclude animal products unless you want it to be to, to unless you want it excluded. But a plant-based diet 
focuses on plant-based foods. So eat more plant foods. That doesn't necessarily exclude meats unless you want it to. Now, if you are going to stay vegan, um, which means no dairy, no animal products, no problem, but I think that you need to consume, um, you need to be even more careful with um, consuming um, um, consuming certain foods that are higher in protein. So beans are higher in and contain some of these brand chains, not a lot. So it's very difficult. It is very difficult to keep muscle from a plant-based diet. You have to be very meticulous. So beans are one way of doing that. They contain some. Or you can take you can take branching amino acid pills uh, or protein. Okay, uh, that's another way of doing it, um, and and that's a, a no. so you can stay plant based, but um, make sure you get the branch chain amino acids in, right to to keep muscle, and that's a very important component of things. In summary, dairy. You may want to give up just a touch of cream, not a big deal. Easy on the cheese because more than I, it's more than I don't know. If you have a lot of cheese, then it might be a problem. Again, the poison is in the dough. So easy, you know, cheese and wine parties, enjoy it, but just don't overdo it. Eggs, it seems like you can have about four eggs a day. Uh, excuse me, not a day, uh, a week. That's about. According to research, the amount that you can have before potentially correlation or association, not causation, potentially where there might be a problem. Again, you, you don't want to demonize any one food. And by the way, I am not talking here of about ethical animal rights reasons. That's not an area that I'm actually really versed on. So I cannot talk on that. I'm not talking about environmental components here. There are environmental components of uh, the production of meats, right? But I, I'm not really versed on that. I'm really 100% focused on your health and how do you live longer and better with age despite prostate cancer. I'm 100% focused on that. And if you eat less meat because one of the things that we're all doing is we're overeating, then that should be good for the environment too, wouldn't it? So, so that's that. If you are going to eat red meat, so if you are going to re- eat red meat, um, don't char it. Um, a good stew is good. Um, careful with grilling or too much grilling. Um, about a couple of times a week is, is fine. Fish is actually your best animal resource, uh, animal muscle resource, and salmon is actually beneficial. So if you have to choose one, choose fish or salmon. Plant-based, meaning, yeah, add a lot of vegetables, particularly your cruciferous, your Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, broccoli, right? Kale, all good. Um, and dairy, leave it out. A little touch here and there is fine. A little cheese here and there, if you want to, it's fine. Okay, that's sustainable. And milk or any other type of dairy product, again, or, or cheese, I meant to say, or eggs. Eggs about, you know, four, four uh, a week with the yolk. You don't have to exclude the yolk. If you want to, I'm not saying you should. I am saying is, Let's get more of these branching and, 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 and amino acids in your system because you need it for muscle for uh, muscle production, along with weightlifting and weight resistance exercises and exercise in general. I am saying that. OK, if you want to stay plant based, no problem. But just know that plant based. Diet does mean eating vegetables. <laughs> Right. Like include vegetables. I see a lot of plant based people. They call themselves plant based, but they're not eating. They're not eating vegetables. Include vegetables. Get the amino acids in, maybe through pills. Be very strict on getting uh, enough protein in in from high uh, from plant based sources and. Live the rest of the lifestyle that includes exercise, sleep and targeted nutraceuticals. Okay. So I hope this is helpful to you. I, I'm sure it is. Please share with friends and uh, uh, that you may like at your uh, prostate cancer support groups. Anything is helpful. 
It helps with the algorithms, of course. Uh, go ahead and subscribe to your platform of wherever you listen to this podcast. This is Dr. Geo signing off. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of the Dr. Geo podcast. You can watch all episodes of this podcast and much more by subscribing to my YouTube channel on youtube.com forward slash Gio Espinoza ND. If you love what you heard today, you can help by leaving a five-star review of the podcast on Apple and Spotify, as each review helps us reach more men who are serious about improving their urological health and how to function better with age. And for the latest research and actionable takeaways in the world of men's health and integrative urology, sign up for my newsletter at drgeo.com. I'll see you next time.